a very old Stewartess 50 steam plant. This is part two, starting the rebuild. And it's not the only thing that I'm rebuilding. I'm totally rebuilding my recording studio. Although in the form that you see it here, this is just a lash up, because I'll be moving it to some new premises shortly. And as the camera swings round to the left, here's the iMac where I do all the video editing, including this voiceover, on a daily basis. Well, almost every day. Recently, I've had to put an extraordinary large amount of time into doing this job. Not just the wiring up, which is very untidy, I know, but making the system work. Everything goes through this central mixer. This is a Yamaha TF5. All of these keyboards output their audio into the mixer, where it can be controlled. I have quite a good collection of keyboards, and I particularly like this Moog Subsequent 37. But not as much as I like this one. It's called a Matrix Brute and it makes some very interesting sounds. Back now into the workshop, and here's what I've been doing. I cleaned up the S50 as you saw in the previous episode. I think it's time to have a look at the boiler. This is a very old Bassett Loke boiler, and the boiler itself's pretty good, but the mounting that it sits on is exceptionally good. The owner of the steam plant, Bob Brocklehurst from Pugnes Light Railway, called over to see me the other evening, and we were discussing what to do about the water gauge. There's nothing wrong with this water gauge. It's one of a type made by my friend at CME Engineering, Mr Chris English. It's just very small and weedy and doesn't look good. So I looked through my box of random old water gauges and found this one. This is a three cock water gauge. By moving two of the levers you can cut off the steam to the water gauge if you break the glass. And the third one at the bottom is the blowdown valve. And this vintage water gauge will be just perfect for this vintage boiler. The main problem is though, Bob made some bushes for it and the holes are 5 sixteenths by 32. These are just adapters really, the thread on the water gauge is 3 sixteenths by 40. And if I fit the water gauge like this, it's too low down. The top fitting needs to go in the hole at the top of the boiler. Also I'm looking for a place to fit this whistle. And I was going to use a quarter by 40 PM Research elbow on the top hole. But no, I'm going to put the water gauge in there instead. That will give a much longer glass length and it looks a lot better. The 3 sixteenths by 40 threads per inch thread on the water gauge is a little bit tight in the hole in the boiler. In this clip I'm evaluating the possibility of fitting the whistle to the top of the water gauge but in the end I thought no that's not a good idea. So instead I looked through my box of old small vintage clack valves and I found this one. It's not perfect but it's made from phosphor bronze and it looks good when it's fitted to the boiler. Using a 3 sixteenths by 40 threads per inch tap, I'm recutting the thread at the top of the boiler. Mr. Bassett Loke used to import a lot of his stuff from Germany, so quite a few of the fittings appear to be metric, and thankfully, metric fine threads and BA threads are quite similar. And once I re-threaded the hole at the top of the back head, the water gauge screws into it perfectly. I don't like the look of the marks on this clack valve because it looks like it's been hit many times with a spanner, which is what you do when the clack valve either sticks or leaks. As you can see in this clip, the boiler has a brand new safety valve, always a good idea. The old one was well past its best. And as is usual with old Bassett Loke steam taps, this one's a bit bent. And this is a quick common sense warning not to hit the tap while it's in the boiler. Instead, I'm going to dismantle the tap and you can see how wobbly it is. Here's a close-up view. You can see how much off-center it is. And here's a shot of it in the lathe chuck. And as I rotate the chuck, you can see just how wobbly it really is. So I'm going to tap it back into position, but not like this. This obviously does move it, but it's not the best way to do it. Before I do the job properly, here's a health and safety warning. Be very careful. For a couple of obvious reasons, and don't use the copper side of the hammer, use the hide side of the hammer. The couple of reasons are, if you miss the part and hit the chuck, then the chuck might throw the hammer at you, which is not a good idea. I've done a lot of this, so I'm well practiced in the art of straightening things that are not straight by putting them in the chuck and hitting them with a soft hammer. Before any experts write in, I'm doing it wrong for the video. And here, as you can see, nothing much is happening. I'm hitting it a lot of times in the wrong place. Don't hit it from above, because you'll put too much pressure on the piece of work. One could, I suppose, use a dial test indicator, and then you would get it deathly accurate. But that's not really required for this application. The best way to do it is to tap it from underneath the centre, very gently until it straightens. 
It's best to practice on a piece of scrap metal before you do it on a part that you need to keep. This is straight enough for the application. Now it's time to remove the old gland packing from the nut and loosely reassemble the valve. I'll be polishing this valve up and fitting it with some new gland packing in the fullness of time. Over now to the baseboard, and this is a bit of a curiosity. It has a very thin piece of sheet metal on top of the wood. And I was surprised to find that this thin piece of sheet metal is held to the wooden baseboard using some small brass pins around the outer edge. But once I removed all of these, it didn't come away from the board. And that's because, apart from the pins around the edge, which came out easy enough, there are also quite a few carpet tacks which hold the piece of metal down to the baseboard. And this is in the area where the boiler was, so I think what must have happened is that in the past, the piece of metal warped with the heat from the boiler and became uneven underneath the boiler where the burner went. So the multitude of carpet tacks were just to keep the piece of metal flat. Some curious markings underneath this. Apart from the shapes, it says yellow cab coat on it. The metal plate is now in the scrap bin. This is the part that I'm interested in. And in this clip, I'm giving the original baseboard a really good going over with some panel wipe. This is a degreaser and is removing most of the grease and grime, followed by using some Scotch Brite to clean up the edges. That's about it for this episode. It will be a while before this project is finished. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.